Hello, Khabarim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching the New Institute of Biblical Research, and uh, I've got, got it on the screen. It was live uh, intro there. Apologize for that. But anyway, I wanted to share with you something very quick here before uh, we head out for Israel there. And by the way, uh, if you believe this ministry and want to support this ministry, please do so. Go to IsraelReturns.com or IsraeliNewsLive.org. Um, we certainly need your help when we're headed to Israel here. It's a very serious time there. Uh, let me share with you, though, something. This is something that I'm, a lot of people share with me quite often. Uh, this particular verse here, and I wanted to bring this to your attention as well. This is in 2 Thessalonians. This happens to be chapter 2, uh, where it says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there coming a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. By the way, the words, that day shall not come, is in italics. It's not actually in the original uh, Greek there. But anyway, there's supposed to be a coming of a falling away first. By the way, that falling away has been for nearly 1,700 years, in case you didn't know. Because the true gospel that Yeshua first preached in the uh, when he was here, the humaneness of the gospel of Yeshua that was there, only lasted for about 200 years. And then the people drifted away and totally went away from the word. But anyway, the, the revealing of that man of sin, though, is for the day you're living in now. Anyway, though, it says here, he opposed and, and, uh, and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. See, he's, he's a religious man. He sits in the temple of God, showing himself that, is, that he is God. Is that not right? Now, I'm just trying to pull something up for you real quick here. This was in the Humane Gospel, chapter 61, verse 8 in the layout that I've put it in here. I shared this with you the other day. Remember, first let me share it with you, Revelation. Revelation chapter 13, verse uh, 6 through 7 says, And he opened his mouth and blasphemed against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and power was given over him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. Brother, sister, what do you think Pope Francis is coming to do with this new world order? He's given power to make war with the saints, the true children of God. Not these ones out here that are bloodthirsty, but the true children of God, he's going to be able to make war with. And he's going to be able to overcome them. And he's also given power over every kindred, tongue, and nation. How do you know he's going to be given this power? According to Revelation, the reason, let me share this with you, friends. He's given this power over all of them. Why? Because he wants, he is really wanting to shut up anybody that speaks against the Catholic Church. This is why you see people like John Hagee, Rick Warren, and, and, and Rick Warren, I'm beginning to wonder if he's not going to be the false prophet because he has sucked up so much to the Pope of Rome and is in every form promoting the Pope of Rome as being the most wonderful guy that ever lived. Now, when you read Revelation, he's going to blaspheme the name of God. Again, he's, he's against God and everything else. You think this is some kind of Muslim guy. But if you read the humane gospel, we find out that he's actually a man that claims the name of Jesus Christ. Watch what Yeshua says. Yea, I tell you, in that age to come, the Father's name shall be blasphemed in a manner like never before in the history of the world, greater than even the star count of heaven itself. Then Yeshua says, for hands dripping with the innocent blood of my creatures will take up my name in vain and mislead many, and they will follow the ways of the Pharisees and not the true path of the pure oblation. What does he mean by the way of the Pharisees? See, the Pharisees, you have to remember, there, yes, there is a Levitical law that allowed the killing of the animals. But remember, God never instructed Moses, as the prophet Jeremiah says in chapter 7, that when your fathers came out of the, into the, in the wilderness out of Egypt, I never commanded them to offer sacrifice of animals. Okay, just paraphrasing that. And if you go to the book of, uh, I believe it is in the book of Numbers or Deuteronomy 1, 
latest Deuteronomy, God clearly only gave Moses the Ten Commandments and the two statutes, not the 613 laws that we have in Israel. And by the way, Yeshua was constantly condemning the Pharisees and all these different ordinances that they had. They, he wasn't condemning the Talmud, friend. He was condemning the fact that they were using the Levitical law to justify the killing of the animals. And Yeshua says, if you knew what this meant, Matthew chapter 7, by the way, if you knew what this meant, I desired mercy, not sacrifice. He says, you would not have killed the innocent. See? Or as literally in the Hebrew Matthew, he says, you would not have bound the guiltless. What does that mean? Bounding him to the altar and burning him. But notice, Yeshua says, hands dripping with the innocent blood of the creatures will take up my name in vain. They're claiming to be Christians and, and shall mislead many. They will follow the ways of the Pharisees and the, not the true path, path of the pure oblation. By the way, according to the Talmud, the, the rise of vegetarianism was so great uh, after, the, after the destruction, of, uh, up into the time of the destruction of the second temple. Also, all your early church fathers, Tertullian, Clement, uh, Basil, all of them speak about the vegetarian way. They said that Matthew was a vegetarian. Josephus said that, that, that both uh, Simon and John were Essenes. He actually says it. And then Pliny, who was a, uh, an elder of the church who died in 79, who lived during the time of the apostles, said the Essene community was located on the northwest corner of the Dead Sea. Qumran is the only place on the northwest corner of the Dead Sea, by the way. So they were an Essene community, in fact. Now, I'm bringing these things out here because Yeshua says the, they're going to blaspheme God's name like in no other time. How do you blaspheme God's name? By claiming God did something that he did not do. Like people write me and say, well, God was the first one to ever kill anything in the Bible. He killed a lamb and put it on Adam and Eve. That's not true. You see, in the Hebrew language, he said he put skins on them. But nowhere do we have written in the Hebrew gospel that he killed a lamb and did this. In fact, Hebrew language, it shows like skin of a human. It could be an animal skin, but if you read the gospel, or if you read uh, the, the book of Adam and Eve, we find out that that skin was actually human skin because he tells more detail there. Because Adam asked, we were clothed in a light. What is this on me now? And God says, I give you layers of skin. And yes, you do have layers of skin. Isn't that interesting? A book that's over 2,000 years old, by the way. The oldest copy is over 2,000 years old of the book of Adam and Eve. All right, so there's a man that's hands are dripping with blood that takes up the name of Jesus. And he says they fall in the way of the Pharisees. Now, you have to remember, until Constantine, there was no, no such thing as that, you know, that Yeshua multiplied fish. This was added later. It's not in any of the earliest manuscripts whatsoever. And as, so we see it in the scene gospel. He never multiplied fish. He multiplied bread and grapes is what he did. But the point is, they take up the name of Yeshua, and they take up the habit of the Pharisees. They go back to offering the sacrifices. Remember, Yeshua beat out everybody out of the temple. According to the book of John, he took a cord and made it seven cords into a whip and beat them out of the temple and said, my father's house is a house of prayer, and you've made it into a den of thieves. See, actually, you know, in another place, he says you made it into a, a cave of, of the butchers. And God says in, 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 in the uh, commandments, thou shalt not kill. Think about it, friends. Now, I told you, I wasn't going to play church. I'm sick and tired of it. You know, God is going to send the two witnesses. Even Jesus says about Elijah when they ask him, doesn't the scribe say that Elias must come first? And Yeshua says, truly, in the Greek, it's in the future, truly Elijah shall first come and restore all things. It's exactly right. And if he's going to restore all things, things are not all restored as of yet, are they? He's got to restore back the humane truth of God's word is what he's got to do, all right? So anyway, so what happens here? The name of God is blasphemy because they make God a murderer and God's not a murderer, okay? He did, he's not a killer. And they wear the Pharisees, the Pharisees still, even today they want to offer sacrifices. Isaiah chapter 66 says that if you kill an ox, it's as if you kill a man. Now, if God says through Isaiah, if you kill an ox, it's as if you killed a man. Do you not realize that the steak you eat on your table is the fact that an ox or a cow or something like that has to die in order for you to have it? And God said it's as if you killed a man. But don't you realize that it's murder then? Then what are we doing in all these restaurants? They're altars to Baal. You know how many people, I mean, we've lost more than half the supporters of this ministry. And by the way, to begin with, when our ministry was at its peak, we never, never had some great savings. All we were able to do is to go and take the gospel to different countries, take it to Israel, and do these things here. We live like a man that works at a job from week to week, and half of those people walked away. But I will not bow. I've told my wife, I must 
tell the people the truth. And I asked you guys and you said you wanted to know the truth. Now, I'm kind of rushing because we're leaving for Israel here in just two hours. I have to leave. So I want to rush and just share these things with you. Let me continue on here, though, in 2 Thessalonians. It says, And then shall that wicked be revealed. Verse 8, Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. The spirit of his mouth is through the two witnesses and the plagues that they will bring on the earth like, uh, like Moses and Aaron did. The brightness of his coming is the judgment that God brings on the last seven, eight days after the two witnesses have finished their ministry. And with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that, that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. The love of the truth is the humaneness of God. You know, not just, not just tickle people's ears, but the humaneness of God. For this cause, God shall send them strong delusions that they shall believe a lie, that they, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You know, one of the early church fathers, and I forget which one it was, I think it was Clement, he said, you've made your belly unto a God. And he says, when you eat flesh, you allow demons to dwell in you. Friends, we are the temple of the living God. Yeshua says to the Pharisees, you're like the whited tombs. Now, he never said you're full of dead man's bones. The word man's in there, by the way, is in italics as well. He said you're just full of dead bones. In the humane gospel, he said you're full of dead things. We should be a temple for the living, for the Holy Spirit to dwell in us. If it was wrong, I mean, to begin with, if God says it's wrong to kill an ox. If he says killing an ox is like killing a man, to kill a, 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 the, 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 the lamb is to breaking a dog's neck. Do you think he changed? Did, did God change for some reason? He gave us a vegetarian diet. We're going back to the millennial reign where there's no killing another vegetarian diet. When Moses came out with the children of Israel, they were on a vegetarian diet, the manna, but yet when they lusted for the blood of the fish, God gave them heat. Now, he does have a permissive will. I'm not going to say God doesn't have a permissive will. I understand. I understand the Levitical law. He said he gave Israel up to, to, to worship the host of heaven. The host of heaven were the fallen angels. See? And that's where the blood sacrifice came in. But it's true. God only gave 10 commandments originally, two statutes, not 613. Do you want to go with the restoration of God's word or do you want to stay under the Pharisaic law? They didn't have a Talmud, by the way, when Jesus was here. So when Jesus was condemning, in fact, if you don't believe that Jesus didn't challenge the Levitical law, when he says, you've heard it said of them of old time, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but I say unto you, if a man wants your coat, give him your cloak also. By the way, he was challenging the Levitical law. Think about it. Anyway, our website is israelreturns.com or israelinewslive.org. Pray for us. Support this ministry if you truly believe it. We do need your help. But I can't, I cannot tickle people's ears, and I cannot play church. I must tell you the truth.